So whenever I make a video about authentication or read something about it, I always find myself changing my mind about some part of it. And this last time uh, was no exception when I just finished my big auth video with JWTs. So I was having some discussions in the comment section and I've kind of changed my mind a little bit on local storage and JWTs and are they okay to store there. Now if you ask anyone should you store JWT in local storage, um, you hear the same thing. I, I say it too, I'm just so used to hearing it that I just, I just kind of like took that um, reason and just went with it. And that is, uh, if you use, try storing JWTs in local storage, you're going to be vulnerable to XSS. Right? There's this attack called XSS. And sure enough, if you search JWT local storage on Google, one of the first results is a Stack Overflow where they talk about how uh, you need to make sure and you're very protected because if you're vulnerable to XSS, um, they can grab your token, access token from local storage. And what I've kind of come to a conclusion of is if your application is vulnerable to XSS, it doesn't really matter where you're storing your token. If you're storing it in local storage, yes, they can hack it and they can actually get the actual token value, but a lot of times what they're going to want to do with that is to just make a request with it. And so if you're storing it, let's say in a cookie, maybe I can't access an HTTP only cookie, but I can still make requests on behalf of the user. Um, and so I'm gonna kind of walk you through in this video uh, the chain of logic that got me to this conclusion and uh, kind of teach you a little bit about uh, some of the stuff I learned about XSS. Okay, so what I wanted to start with is just how can we um, actually do an XSS attack on a React application. All right, because I had never done one really before, and you may not even know what I'm talking about with this attack. So I figured we'd start there. So I made this little application right here. Uh, it's very simple. It's actually not that hard to uh, write code that is vulnerable. So what I do is I store in a state or a hook some text, and then I have a text area here. In this text area, whenever I type in this text area, I update the hook, the state there. Um, so whatever I type in the text area, it's stored in this uh, state. And then all I do is I pass this text uh, to this div here. And I'm using this prop. This is the key one right here. It's called dangerously set inner HTML. Um, and so I'm setting the text to be the HTML of this div. Um, and as you can see, this actually is a very dangerous prop. And this allows us to do an attack. So Let's see this in action. First off, what is the you know simple version of this or the non-malicious? Well, I can do stuff like write an h1 tag and say hello. All right, and so now I can kind of see my HTML that I type here being rendered here. That's pretty cool, right? Uh, the problem is is users can now write things like, for example, an image, and I actually have this over here. This is our first one that we can type. Um, so for example, I could type in here, image source on error, and then do this little alert. So what this does is, and notice we didn't, so this is just an HTML tag, and we didn't set the source, right? It's empty. So what that does is it triggers the image to call the on error function. And this on error function, our callback, is just gonna uh, fire the alert. And so let's copy this, paste this in here. Um, and you can see even before I pasted it, we can see the alert pop up here that says, hey. And I can press OK and I can see it here. And so this is what's known as an XSS attack. So basically I was able to program the website or get the website to execute JavaScript just from putting in a text and input field. Uh, so that can be really dangerous. So we're gonna see in a second uh, what this leads to and how we can like expose this to a user and get a user to run code on their website or with their account for example. Um, okay so I have this this tag here that we pass in and, and here's just the JavaScript that we're running and I have this on each keystroke it reruns so for example if I type a letter it's gonna re uh, execute it so we can see there. Alright so we're gonna get rid of that um, 
and we can open up our console here right click inspect all right so the next thing that I want to go over is just from now on we're going to use an anchor tag just this a here and here's where we're going to see how we can abuse this now with uh, local storage so how is my cookie vulnerable if I have it not my cookie my access token vulnerable if I'm storing it in local storage well I can do something like this right so what this anchor tag is is uh, here whenever I click on the anchor tag it runs some JavaScript in this case we're going to do an alert and this alert just stringifies the local storage so now I can get all the values that are in local storage whenever I click this button and you can see I got a whole bunch of stuff in my local storage right now and so if I was also storing an access token in here an attacker could get all this information uh, okay so, and that is basically how local storage is vulnerable um, because someone could grab the values from local storage and therefore grab any sensitive information you have there okay but just because I can type in this input field and it's going to render the HTML here how is this abusable and how can I basically hack a person's account this way um, well let's say we have it set up where the initial state of our text field is actually coming from the URL so let's say we say the default text we're going to pass in here alright so for this default text uh, what all this nonsense that I have here is doing is if we have a URL like so um, and we have a parameter here I'm just calling it default and it's going to get whatever the string is that we have set equal to so I have the parameter here default is equal to this string and this string is going to be stored into our default text and I did that by reading the href here okay so with that said, now what I can do is I can do things like this. So I can take this uh, URL here and I can paste it into the browser and it's going to take me to this um, page and it's going to render this H1. All right, so this is the you know happy example where um, you know this is it's working as intended. Uh, but then we can start doing this for malicious things. So for example, what I can do is I can send this to a friend and they can put this in their browser and without them even knowing it we can see in the console here that we hack them or whatever we can run some JavaScript um, using their account and so that's how it works we could send them a link and this is just one way there is multiple different ways that you can actually do an XSS attack but from my understanding they all are similar in that you can run JavaScript on someone's browser um, or on someone's account when someone else is using it you can run JavaScript on that and so that's where it, things can go wrong um, and so this is and then what I was just doing here was rendering an image tag with that same effect that I was doing in here I was just console logging something um, so we saw how this is vulnerable with local storage right I can just read the access token but I mentioned earlier that uh, I also thought this could possibly be a problem no matter where you like you stored your access token like for example, if I stored my access token or my JWT in a cookie, I think you're still going to run into problems. Mm -hmm. um, and so let's look at an example of that. So for example, mm -hmm. I could write code that looks like this. So, uh, well not I could write code, I could paste this into the text field there and this is what could hack it. Um, so we have an anchor tag and this is the JavaScript that I want to run on click. So I just told it to uh, fetch to my server. So let's say our server in this case is on localhost 4000. And I just told it to request the send money route. And then here I just said dot then and dot then again. And I'm just console logging the response from the server. And so what's going to happen is I can send this request. Um, and this request is going to send any cookies that the user has in their account. All right, so we can copy this and I can paste it into my field here and now I can click this um, and we can see it successfully sent money right so this could be an example of how it can go very wrong even if you have say you're using a cookie for the access token um, but just because I can make a request on that user's account because I have uh, hacked in 
So just th this is the this is the like the essential thing where you're kind of screwed no matter what you're doing because the hacker can now send requests um, arbitrarily. And so the step one step further of this is you know we could make this so the user doesn't even have to click on a button and they don't even realize money has been sent, right? So we can go back to our image tag trick and there's lots of different ways how you can do uh, this kind of hack. You don't just have to use say an image tag. Um, so on air here, I'm just running that same thing where we fetch this. And so I stuck that in our URL right here and I said default is equal to this image. So if I copy this and now I paste this into my URL and I run this, right, it successfully sent money and I didn't even have to display anything to the user if I wanted to, uh, but there you go. Um, it just in the background runs that request, sends the cookies up, authenticates, and runs a request that the user didn't even want to happen. Even though I'm using a cookie, I'm not using local storage. So with that said, if we take this to its next logical step, if we are basically bad things can happen, whether we are storing our token in local storage or whether we're storing our token in a cookie or if we're storing it in memory, just because of the fact that the user can send a request on your behalf, uh, that's very bad. So if we take that to its conclusion that XSS is very bad and very bad things happen when you're vulnerable to that, I don't think it matters if you store your access token in local storage compared to any other place. Um, because if you're vulnerable to XSS and they do are able to run JavaScript and get your uh, local storage uh, token, it doesn't really matter everything else is also vulnerable as well. Now with that said, I would really love to hear the counter example to this because I never hear the counter example to this. I always, always hear just uh, XSS, or you don't store your JWT in local storage, it is vulnerable to XSS. Um, but there may be a case where uh, a user or an XSS attack is able to read local storage and therefore able to access the token, but they cannot send a fetch request for some reason. I don't know what that attack would look like because I think in most cases it has you running arbitrary JavaScript, um, in which case either way you're going to be able to do something bad with it. Um, but if that case existed where there is like a different type of XSS attack, which you know you don't get as much control over and maybe you can't access as much stuff for some reason, then I can see it, I can see where it could make sense in some circumstances to store your access token somewhere else besides local storage. Okay, so I know there's going to be at least one of these comments that's like, okay, Vin, now what? Uh, you just told me that it doesn't matter if I store my token in local storage um, because if I'm vulnerable to XSS, uh, they could also, you know, get access to that or just make fetches on my account without my permission, right? And so does that mean I should be switching over to use local storage? Uh, and my answer to that is yes and no. I don't, if, I don't think you should change anything that you're really doing right now, but I will tell you what I plan on doing with this knowledge. And that is I feel totally comfortable storing my access token in local storage now. And uh, going forward, I plan on just picking the easiest method uh, to implement authentication. So I know how to do it with both of them. And in some circumstances, it's easier to use local storage. Some circumstances, it's easier to use a cookie. And so I'm just going to pick which one is easier in that circumstance. Um, because I think from a security point, security point of view, I think they're both relatively uh, vulnerable in the same ways. Uh, so that is what I plan on doing with that. But I'm totally not a security expert, so I would love to hear some of your guys' opinion on this. So let me know in the comments below what you think about this and what am I not considering? Because there's gotta be something, right? <laughs>